Hello everyone, welcome to the lecture series of data structures and algorithms using C. I'm Amrit Kaur and I will be covering the topic sparse matrix and its representations. The contents are as follows. First, I'll be discussing about the introduction, that is what sparse matrix is and why it is used. Next, I'll be discussing about the memory representations of the sparse matrix. It is categorized into first triplet representation and the second one linked list representation. The last one I will cover is the classification of sparse matrix. It is also broadly classified into triangular matrices and band matrix. All these topics will be covered in details in the slides to come. Now about the introduction. What are sparse matrices? Before beginning with sparse matrices, let us first discuss about what a matrix is. We are quite familiar with the term matrix. It is nothing but a 2D object that has certain number of rows and certain number of columns. To be precise, I can simply say a matrix has M rows and N columns. Therefore, number of values that it will contain is the product of the rows and the columns, that is M cross N. So if I have to represent this matrix in a computer programming language, then I use arrays to represent it in the form of rows and columns right so now what a sparse matrix is and how it is different from a normal matrix let us see this particular example over here i can see a basic matrix is composed of null and non-zero values null are basically zero values and non-zero values are basically any integer values present over here now sparse matrix is something in which the number of zero values dominate over the number of non-zero values. In other words, if there is a majority of zero valued elements in any given matrix, then that particular matrix is categorized to be as a sparse matrix. Now why are we trying to use or why we actually use this sort of matrix? Now there are two major reasons regarding it. First one is the storage and second is the computation time or the computing time. With storage, I can simply state it in the form of the memory space that will be required to store every element. Now let us see if there are M cross N elements or if I say there is M rows and N columns and S refers to the number of bytes that will be required to store every single element then the total space in the terms of bytes of storage of memory would be m cross n cross s that is if i have 10 rows 10 columns and i am trying to store integer values so ultimately i will be covering up 10 cross 10 cross 2 that is 200 bytes 2 being the space requirement for any integer value now if i try to store this entire matrix that has zeros as well and that to in dominance so a large amount of space will get wasted reason being i only require non-zero element to carry out the basic operations be it multiplication division addition or subtraction so it will be a huge help if i am able to eliminate the zero values and i'm able to represent only the non-zero elements so in this manner i am about to store a huge amount of space by discarding the zero valued elements so next i have computing time now with computing time i simply mean that because my non-zero elements are important so a huge amount of time can be logically saved if i am traversing only the non-zero elements instead of traversing every single element be it zero be it non-zero in order to finally access a non-zero entity. So computing time is also saved if I use this particular concept of removing or discarding any zero valued elements that are present. Now let us consider another example. Because it is very difficult to realize the amount of space that is stored or the amount of storage area that is being saved in terms of a matrix that is as small as 10 cross 10. Let us consider an example that my matrix is of the size 100 cross 100, that is same number of rows and columns. And now I have only 10 non-zero elements present throughout the matrix. 
so out of the total elements only 10 elements over here are non zero elements and rest everything is zero what happens is now if i allocate the space to this particular type of matrix considering every possible value i will be consuming 20000 bytes to store every integer value in the matrix and similarly i will be using 10000 scans for accessing or traversing every single element 20000 is quite clear using the same formula m cross n cross s s is equals to 2 because i am storing integer values and 10000 scan because i know a matrix is traversed through the rows and for every row every column has to be traversed so what happens is i am dealing with two loops at a given time resulting into the multiplication of the same giving me a result of nothing but 10,000 scans in this case. Now this amount of storage and this amount of computation time can be saved if I use certain alternative techniques to store the same. So for this I use number one, triplet representation or the array representation. And the next I use linked list representation. Let us look at the first method that is the triplet representation or the array representation. Now in this case, the sparse matrix is represented in the form of a triplet which is basically composed of row, column and a value. Now row is simply the index value of the row where any non-zero element is located. Column is again the index value of the column where a non-zero element is located and value is that particular value which I am trying to fetch with respect to a given row and a given column. For example, let us take this particular matrix. Now I have labeled this from 0 to n minus 1, reason being array representation, right? So this would be row 0, 1, 2, and 3. Similarly, it would be 0th column, 1, 2, 3, and 4th column. Now I have to store only the non-zero elements. So what I do is, I start traversing from the first row. I store the position of the first non-zero element that, that I get, that is 3. So the value is 3, the column for the same is 2, and I am traversing it from the beginning, that is row 0. Then I store the next non-zero element, that is 4. The column for the same is 4, and the row value is same, that is 0. Then I move on to the next row because elements in this row are over. So for the next row, the first non-zero element is 5, the column for the same is 2, and the row value for the same is 1. The next element is located in the same row. I have the value 7, but the column is different, that is 3, which is obvious, and the row is 1. The next I have the non-zero element, which is 2, which lies in the last row. And then I have 6. So similarly, these two values are also stored corresponding to their column and row value. Now, major change I see is that this particular row, that is the second row, is completely eliminated or is not stored because it contains only zero valued elements. Thus, a lot of space is saved and only the required elements are being stored in the memory. Moving on to next method is the linked list representation. Now why we need to move to this particular representation is, in case of array, I need to know beforehand the exact number of non-zero elements that are present over there so that I can create an array for the same to store it in the memory. That is, beforehand the number requirement is to be known. However, this possibility is eliminated or I can say can be overcome by linked list representation which is dynamic representation. This uses four fields that is a row value, column value, a value of the element and the next node. All these sum up to form a node structure in the form of row, column, value and address of the next node. Row and column and value are similar to the array representation that is row refers to the index of the row of the non-zero element. 
column again refers to the index of the column of the non-zero element. Value refers to the non-zero element value at that situated row and column. Address here refers to the pointer to the next element present in our matrix. Let us consider the same example. I am starting with row that is 0th row over here. Again, 0 to n minus 1 indexes have been taken. Next, the column value over here is 2. The value that is stored is 3. And now this particular field, the last block, is pointing to the next element that is a non-zero element. Now, it could be in the same row also. It could be in another row also. So, we will keep on storing it and we will keep on traversing one row after the other. Next, I have 0th row, 4th column and the value stored is 4 and the last column will point to the address of the next node. Since we are having more non-zero elements present in the matrix, so we will keep on maintaining a pointer to every next upcoming non-zero element until and unless all the elements are being traversed or all the elements are being covered. So in this case, it will keep on traversing it till the last element that is 6 for which the row is 3, the column is 2 and the element is 6. But address of the next node in this case would be null pointer. Reason being, it is the last non-zero element and our search is done. So these were the two representations for a sparse matrix. Next, we will be moving on to the classification of the sparse matrix. Now there are two broad classification. First one is the triangular matrix and the next one is the band matrix. Triangular matrix is commonly known as a square matrix. In this, it has equal number of rows and equal number of columns. It can be subdivided in the form of upper or lower triangle, depending upon how the non-zero elements are being arranged. Next is band matrix. Now, band matrix is also subdivided into diagonal matrix and tridiagonal matrix, depending upon how the non-zero elements are arranged around the diagonal band. Now, what this diagonal band means would be discussed in the slides to come. Types of triangular matrices. First one is upper triangular matrix. Now, as we can see in this example, it is forming a upper triangle over here that is simply non-zero elements being located at this main diagonal band and above this. For lower triangular, it is nothing but all non-zero elements being located at this diagonal band and below it. So the name goes with respect to the location of the non-zero elements that is below the band or above the diagonal band. Next, I have types of band matrices as discussed, diagonal and tridiagonal. So what a diagonal matrix simply means? It simply states that all the non-zero elements are situated along the diagonal of a given matrix. Now, it could be a square matrix also or rectangular matrix also. Square matrix would be forming a uniform shape that is equal number of rows and columns. In case of rectangular matrix, the number of rows and columns can differ. However, the name remains the same depending upon the location of the non-zero elements. And the last we have tridiagonal matrix, that is the elements or I can say the non-zero values are situated on the main diagonal as well as above the main diagonal and below the main diagonal, right? So this is the presentation about tridiagonal matrices, sparse matrices. I hope everything is clear. Here are the few references and the book link that is followed for the same. Thank you very much.